The Lives of the Saints by Father Alban Butler September 4th, St. Rosa of Viterbo of the Third Order of St. Francis When the ambitious Frederick II was excommunicated for the second time by Pope Gregory IX, the emperor responded with a military campaign aimed at conquering the papal states themselves. In the year 1240, he had advanced so far that he took the city of Viterbo in Romagna. A few years before, a couple of poor workers of Viterbo had their newborn daughter baptized with the name of Rosa. That child showed from her most tender age an extraordinary natural goodness. Her childlike virtue and devotion so impressed the people around her that subsequently various astonishing legends were created and mixed with her story to such an extent that it is now very difficult to separate truth from error. In the course of an illness that Rosa suffered when she was eight years old, she had a vision of Our Lady in a dream who told her that she should wear the habit of St. Francis, but without leaving her home, where she would have to give a magnificent example to her relatives and neighbors in word and deed. As soon as Rosa recovered her health, she received the habit of penance and, on her own initiative, gave herself more and more to the contemplation of the sufferings of our Lord and to the consideration of the ingratitude of sinners. At the age of twelve, inspired perhaps by some sermon she heard or by the ardent words of some ghibelline, Rosa began to go through the streets preaching, to inflame the people to fight Frederick II and to riot in order to throw the garrison of the Ghibellines out of the city. Her simple and excited words did not cease to produce their effect, and this became deeper as a result of the rumors that circulated with insistence about the marvels that many of Rosa's listeners experienced. From then on, crowds congregated in front of her house with the hope of hearing her until the young woman's father became frightened and prohibited her to go out in the street and show herself under the threat of a merciless beating if she disobeyed. To her father's threats, Rosa calmly replied, If Jesus was beaten because of me, I can be beaten because of him. I will only do what he told me to do. I cannot disobey him. At the request of the parish priest, Rosa's father lifted the ban, and for two consecutive years, the girl preached for the Pope's cause in the streets of Viterbo. Then the supporters of the emperor were alarmed and began to intrigue so that Rosa was condemned to death for being a threat and a danger for the state. The Podigia of Viterbo did not want to know a word about this conspiracy because he was a man of good feelings and because he feared the reactions of the people. But instead, he pronounced the sentence of banishment against Rosa and her parents. Then they took refuge in Soriano, but Rosa did not stop preaching. And from the month of December 1250, she dedicated herself to go through the streets like an illuminated one, announcing loudly the coming death of Emperor Frederick I. On the 13th of that month, to the astonishment and admiration of all those who had listened to her predictions, the invader died in Apulia. Immediately afterwards, the Pope's party dominated the situation in Viterbo, and Rosa returned triumphantly to her native city. There is a story that, before his return, he confounded a fanatical Ghibelline woman, appealing to the judgment of God. Returning to Viterbo, she tried to enter the convent of Santa Maria del Rose, but the mother abbess refused to admit her for lack of a dowry. Very well, said Rosa with a kindly smile. For now, you do not want me here, but perhaps your reverence will be more willing to receive me when I am dead. The parish priest put much effort into helping her and went so far as to build her a chapel near the convent and an attached house so that Rosa and some companions could give themselves to religious life. But the nuns of Santa Maria received an order from Pope Innocent IV to close the new chapel in the house, since the convent of Santa Maria had the privilege of being the only one for miles around and did not tolerate competition from any other. Rosa then returned to her parents' house, where she died on March 6, 1252, at the age of 17. She was buried in the church of Santa Maria in Podio, but on September 4, 1258, her body was transferred to the church of the convent of Santa Maria de las Rosas, as she had predicted. In 1357, a fire destroyed the church to its foundations, but the young woman's body was left intact, and since then, annually, the coffin is carried in procession through the streets of Viterbo. Immediately after Rosa's death, Pope Innocent IV opened an inquiry into the virtues of the maiden, but her canonization was not pronounced until 1457.